All right, let's go over the parts, supplies, and tools that I used on this maintenance procedure. Not everything that I'm going to show you is required to do this job. Matter of fact, you could do it with a fraction of what I'm going to show you, but because there's a lot of little tips and tricks in here and there's a variety of ways you can do it and there are some important things I need to put, point out, let's go over it all. Okay, so of course you need to have your oil change kit. You can see on the left here, I've got some oil, I've got a disposable funnel, oil filter, and a crush washer for the magnetic drain plug. That stuff you need. Now the torque wrench, some may argue you need it, some may say you do not. I prefer to use it, I include that as an as needed component. And then I have a 3 8 drive ratchet with a 13 millimeter deep socket. I have a quarter inch drive ratchet with a six inch extension, an eight millimeter socket, and a 13 millimeter socket. Now, between the three eighths and the quarter inch, I kind of interchange those throughout certain parts of the procedure. You don't necessarily need both sizes, but for simplicity of the way I do things, I like to have both. Then I have the needle nose pliers, which are used for getting your oil filter out of the bike, and you can also use them to put the new one in. I've got some paper towels and latex gloves to represent uh, some of the materials that I used. I've got some contact cleaner up there on the top left. That is something that you could omit. You could just get by with the rags and not use contact cleaner at all, but I just really like that really neat and clean, complete procedure that just really just makes me feel good when it's all said and done. Then couple things down here we've got the oil catch basin and the motorcycle stand now you need an oil catch basin of some kind there's multiple types that's an automotive type you could even make one out of some sort of jug if you needed to the motorcycle stand you don't necessarily need but I used it to lean the bike over and I also use a stand when I add the oil to the bike to have it level but you could come up with another way to level your bike you could have someone hold it you could lean it to a wall. You could hold it yourself while you're filling the oil. There's a variety of ways. So you could omit the stand. And then I've also got this triangle stand that I used to make a couple steps easier. You could also do without that. But again, just makes things easy. Now, some parts that need to be pointed out. I've got this oil screen here and I've got a variety of O-rings. The O-rings in here are, this one is for your oil filter cap, you've got the oil screen cap, you've got the oil screen O-rings, and then somewhere in there, you can't quite see it right now, but there is an O-ring for the screw plug at the bottom of the engine case. So all the O-rings that could be affected in this change are there. Now the reason I point those out is I have those on hand and I highly recommend that everyone have them on hand because even though you can reuse them multiple times and I have been using the ones that are on my bike, came out of the factory, I've got over 3,000 miles on the bike, multiple oil changes, and I've been using the same ones over and over. But I have this screen and those O-rings there. In the event when I'm doing the procedure that one is found to be damaged or broken or I break it during the removal, I have the new ones to put on. At some point, I will put those on, at which point I will buy another kit and always just have some on hand. So that's, that's really important because a lot of people are going to tell you, and you'll see this when you watch videos and read comments, regardless if it's the same bike or a different bike, people will tell you that, oh, you don't need those. You can use them over and over again, and they'll say the same thing about this crush washer. Yeah, you can, but what happens if something goes wrong? Have them with you. Don't you know end up with your bike taken apart, oil drained out of it, and you can't put it back together. So, I think that's a pretty uh, complete way to go about doing this. Let's get started with the procedure. Prior to draining the oil out of the machine, you need to first go around and clean the area surrounding the five plugs or caps that will be removed during this procedure. This includes the oil fill plug that you see right here, the magnetic drain plug, the oil screen cap, 
the screw plug at the bottom of the engine case. Do not attempt to remove this plug or this plug and you have your oil filter cap. I personally rinse my bike off thoroughly before I do an oil change, but what you certainly need to do is go around and clean these areas. One way to do it is you can use like a rag or a paper towel, like I am on this oil fill plug. And on this one, you actually, look how much came off even after it's been rinsed. You can kind of want to get in that little gap, try to go around it. Get as much debris as you can. Take as much time as you need to get that clean. That's one method. Another method would be to take a cleaning solution, such as this contact cleaner, and to spray off the area around your plugs and caps. This way you can rinse off all the debris, and then you can go back with your towel and give them a final wipe down around their edges of their sealing surface and ensure that they're very clean as you start this procedure. Repeat a process such as those I've shown for the five positions. A step that is often overlooked, and this is important for any sealed fluid reservoir, is that prior to draining the fluid, you ensure that you can easily remove the fill plug or cap and inspect it for damage or see if it is broken. This might seem easy on these um, thumb screws for motorcycles, but there are applications where this could be a problem, so ensure that you can do that. This is also a good time to go ahead and complete cleaning it. You want to be careful when you're cleaning the portion on the clutch cover here not to knock any debris in, so you're going to clean away with your stroke from knocking anything in. Notice how I'm, when I do that, I'm being very careful that anything gets pushed out. Another thing I do is I will leave the cap in as I do the procedure, but I leave it kind of loose. This creates an air gap that can assist in the draining of your fluid. So just kind of put that on there, but don't tighten it snug at this point. Now it is time to position your oil catch basin I like to use an automotive type. These ones give you a lot of surface area to work with. And something that needs to be pointed out on these KTM bikes is it is best to perform this procedure with these bikes on the ground, sitting on their side stand. Some people may be accustomed to doing this on a bike stand. The problem with that is these KTMs have three plugs that are on the side, plugs and caps, and oil is going to come out of them when you remove them. And if you have it on a stand, it's going to create a mess and you're going to have to clean it up. Another tech tip, if you notice this catch basin is hitting the bike's kickstand, that limits how far I can move the basin this way, and that can result in some cases where oil either splashes over or shoots out, depending on how you go about removing those plugs, and again, will create cleanup. A tech tip is if you have a way to prop this bike, in my case, I have one of these triangle stands that I can put back here in the rear axle, I can put the kickstand up, position this triangle stand, and now I have the ability to move this catch basin over further and give me plenty of working room to capture all the oil without creating a mess. In the owner's manual, KTM describes this procedure as being done in a certain order. They want you to start by removing the magnetic oil drain plug, then they want you to move the screw plug on the bottom of the engine case, then the screw plug for the oil screen. They want you to clean all the parts, and then for reinstallation, they want you to put the screw plug on the engine case first, then reinstall your oil screen, then the screw plug that caps over that, then they want you to reinstall the magnetic drain plug. They want all that stuff torqued to specification. Then they have you move on to the oil filter cap and oil filter. Now to be fair, I do not think that you would be taking any serious risk if you got out of order in the removal or the installation of those parts. But for the purpose of this video, we will follow the order of operations as listed in the manual. Before I start to remove 
the oil drain plugs, what I do is I take a clean towel or rag and I place it off to the side. And what I what I'll do is I as as I remove the plugs, I will clean them over the catch basin and then I will set them on the clean towel or rag to dry as I complete the procedure. So it's time to break loose the magnetic drain plug. So a tip on doing this is break it loose and then keep your socket or your extension, whatever combo you're using, attached to the plug. And this way you can control the volume of oil that comes out when you do it. Most of your oil is going to come out of this magnetic drain plug. So this is, this is definitely the best one to start with for that reason. So now I'll get some oil out. I'm actually going to be gathering a sample to send off. So what I do is I let a little bit out for the first part. They, they don't want you to get that first part of the sample. And then I'm going to fill my container up for my sample. That's going to be another video for you guys. Okay, got that. Now you can continue to let this flow out. And see how I use that plug to control the volume? I'm also keeping a certain amount of it off the frame. Not that it's a big deal. You could just pull this out and let it flow rapid fire. I guess I can show you that just for demonstration purposes. See what happens. Gets all over your frame. Of course, you don't have to sit here and babysit it. it makes it easy. And then you can move on to expect, inspecting your magnetic plug. Mine actually looks quite good. There's not much material on there. I'm very happy with that because I actually rode the bike pretty hard on this oil change. I was doing a lot of quick shifting and a lot of uh, hard launches. I'm very happy to see the condition of uh, the magnetic plug in this situation. So now before I set down my magnetic plug, I will rinse it off with contact cleaner. This is a good time to separate your, um, the washer that's used, the sealing washer. I would hold on to this used one until you have completed the procedure, at least until you complete it before you discard it, just in case you need a backup for some reason. There's a lot of people that believe these can be reused. That is fair and true. You can reuse these. I just replace them every time. They usually come in the oil change kits, but hold on to it until you're done. that nice and clean and I can set it over here to dry. Now we can remove the screw plug from the bottom of the engine case. Remember, you're only removing that cap screw type. You are not taking out the other two that require like an Allen wrench to take off. We will repeat our process for cleaning on this one as well as the oil screen cap. You should also be inspecting your O-rings at this time to see if they can be reused or need to be replaced. Now I will remove the screw plug for the oil screen. Okay, so my oil screen came out with the cap, which is great. But if it doesn't, you can take a pair of needle nose pliers or another tool and you can grab that oil screen and carefully kind of pull it out of there. It does come apart from the cap. So we'll go ahead and get that cleaned as well. Again, during this time, you're going to be inspecting your O-rings. And something to keep in mind with the screen is you want to clean it inside and out. The screen is meant to keep things from going one direction. So you don't want to force anything through the screen. So I take care to actually rinse the inside of this out and that helps to push any particulate off of the outside of the screen rather than force it into it. Inspect the O-rings for damage or cracking and allow that to dry. Clean the cap and allow it to dry. At this point, I will often take several minutes 
to just let the engine drain. You could just wipe off the surfaces and install the plugs and caps immediately. I like to just give it about five minutes or so, get me a drink, stretch my legs, and then come back, clean this stuff up, and reinstall. Another thing is you could move on to your oil filter cap at this point and continue to let it drain. But as I stated for the purpose of this video and following the procedure in the manual, I will get the three plugs installed and then I will do the cap. But you could, for simplicity, shift your catch basin over a little bit, do your oil filter cap, let everything drip for four or five minutes and then reinstall. Even after several minutes, there's still a slow drip of oil coming out. So another tech tip you can use to make your life a little easier is take your side stand, if you have one of these triangle stands like me, put it in the opposite side and lean the bike over that way. This will make it to where those two ports don't continue to drip and it will just be a lot easier to get them cleaned up and to put your plugs back in. Now, I have to be very clear here, it's not critical to do that. If you have a slow drip coming out, you can just wipe those off, put those plugs in real quick, and then wipe off any residual. You will be just fine. But if you've got that OCD thing going on, and you just want to get a really super clean, make you feel good install, you can do something like what I've just shown here. It is time to start cleaning the ports where your plugs and caps will go back. It would be fair to put a little bit of spray solution on your clean rag or paper towel and wipe off these surfaces. I honestly just use a dry, clean towel. Clean those surface sealing portions out. Get that wiped off proper. You're gonna do this for all three of those plugs. Get them ready to be reinstalled. Before reinstalling any of the caps, plugs, or parts that may have O-rings on them, it's a good idea to get a light dab of oil on your finger, fresh clean oil, and you can just put a light little bit on the O-ring. This helps reduce friction on the sealing surface and will help you get a positive seal. Perform that on each of your parts with O-rings. Now we can install the screw plug at the bottom of the engine case. Triple check, make sure you got that surface wiped clean. Insert it by hand, bring it up to snug by hand, and the owner's manual recommendation for the torque setting is 15 newton meters or 11.1 foot-pounds, and you can torque that to spec. Next is to install our oil screen. The manual describes doing this by using what they're calling a pen wrench and they, you put that through the center of the screen and then you will kind of fish that into the engine. Now you could use a screwdriver, a center punch, some type of long slender tool to do that, but I have actually found that you can do this by hand. Now there is a recessed portion inside of the engine in there at the length of this oil screen that this portion with the O-ring fits into. You're actually feeling for that when you do it and you just kind of need to wiggle this around or twist it. You could stick your pinky in it. And I have found that there's a, you see that where it popped in there? A very positive connection that it went in there. If you're going at an angle, you may not hit it and you kind of need to fish it around until it gets that pop. Okay, now you can see it's all the way in there. If it's not and you go to tighten your cap on, you can crush, you can crush and damage that oil screen. So just make sure that you get that positive connection in there if you're unsure. Pull it out and try it a couple times and make sure that you're confident that you're hitting that recessed portion that that screen goes into. Now it's time for the cap. See how it's hollowed out? That screen is going to go into there. So make sure as you're screwing that in by hand, 
you want that screen to pop in there. If it's fighting you, you should be able to basically bottom this out to the O-ring without any trouble. Mine's going right in there because I got everything all nice and square. Now I'm touching the O-ring for that last little bit. I basically bottom this out all the way before I put the torque wrench on there. The torque setting is also 15 Newton meters or 11.1 .1 foot pounds. Get that last little bit. And we're good. Now it's time to take our new crush washer for the magnetic drain plug and get that put on the plug and installed to the bike. Now, another tech tip. Washers, crush washers are no different. They have two sides to them. One side is what we call the cut side. And this side has kind of like a sharp, it's a very a sharp edge and it's very flat. And then the opposite side is kind of has a rounded edge. So what is typical, and this is basically all installations, not just for crust washers, is that the cut side will go to the surface of the piece of equipment or the part, the ceiling surface of the engine in this case, and then the rounded side I will put to the inside ceiling edge of the drain plug, okay? So cut side towards your engine. Get that run in. I get it started just a couple threads. It's a little bit difficult to get your fingers in there so I can take this socket, this long socket. And kind of run that in. Now the torque setting is either 20 Newton meters or 14.8 foot pounds. But something you're going to notice, and this is going to happen with most torque wrenches, is with a standard socket on there, standard length, you kind of have difficulty getting in there. It's a little bit crooked and awkward. This is a problem because when you change your angle or if you add an extension, something like that, it can alter the accuracy of the torque setting. Now a quick fix would be just to put a long socket on there, a deep socket and that would give you the proper length without interference. But let's say for the sake of argument that you don't have a deep socket that matches the drive of your torque wrench, you're gonna to have to make a decision. You can either add an extension, which will create a discrepancy in your torque, or you have to kind of do that crooked angle. So in all honesty, it's not that critical. I think you can put the extension on here and make it work. You're gonna have a slight discrepancy, but it's just not that critical for this type of ceiling surface. Now we're there. Now it is time to remove the oil filter cap and the used oil filter. If you followed my tech tip previously, where you leaned the bike the opposite direction to get those drain plugs back in, you should lean the bike back to its standard kickstand side at this point so that you can get the rest of the oil that will leak out of this oil filter cavity. Okay. Clean your bolts off with your contact cleaner. Set those on your clean rag to dry. Take a pair of needle nose pliers and you can work that cap off. Again, you want to clean this and inspect your O-ring. You can take your needle nose pliers and extend them open to get a bite on that oil filter. Sometimes you gotta put a lot of pressure, but you can work it out of there. It's good to, to inspect this to see if there's any damage. In my case, I actually went for an extended interval on my oil. So I'd be curious to see, for one, if there was any physical damage, any rips or tears, or two, where I rode the bike kind of hard, is there any metal shavings, anything like that? I think we're good. I'm gonna just set that down out of the way. And I'm gonna give this a few minutes to drain off. Now that you let it drain off for a few minutes, you can come back. Wipe your frame off with one of your dirty or pre-used towels or rags. And then take a clean new rag and wipe off your ceiling surface for the oil cap.
or the oil filter cap, excuse me. I often even go in there a little bit deep and get some extra. You will be pre-priming this with new oil. So get that surface cleaned up. And at this point, you will need to lay the bike on its side. Let's go ahead and do that. During past oil changes, I have laid the bike completely over on the ground on its handlebar and the foot peg. What I have found, and as you can see here, that I've used a motorcycle stand, put the handlebars at the full lock towards the left and place the handlebar end on the motorcycle stand. I find that a little bit preferable. That way you're not taking the risk of abrasions on any of your plastics or your exhaust. And you don't have to put your foot peg at that full lock as you can kind of see down there. This is a little bit more preferable and works out great. Now we want to take our oil filter with a little bit of oil on our finger and we're going to pre-lube the seal on the oil filter itself right inside there around the edges. You can also go ahead and put a light film on your O-ring for the cap right on that leading edge there. Make that thing slip in nice and easy. Now what you want to do is you're going to fill this reservoir partially. I go about maybe halfway, three quarters, and that is the manual instruction. Now some people, what they will do is they will pre-soak these oil filters. That's great as well. Nothing wrong with doing that. Other people say you don't need to do either. You can just put the filter in there and let the oil get pumped up through there. I'm not gonna say that won't work, uh, but it's not ideal. I would rather prime the system, get some of this oil in the reservoir, and you could even go as far as also uh, soaking the oil filter. That way you're just, you're limiting the amount of things that can go wrong as the system's priming. You know, some people might, might say it's insignificant. That's fine. They're probably right. Their bike's probably okay. But hey, why not? We pay a lot of good money. Let's get this stuff primed up proper. Let's go ahead and get some oil in there. You don't want to overfill it because then it can spill out when you go to push your filter in. But okay, that went up to about three quarters. Give it a moment to burp some air. I can see some bubbles coming up. Some of that will go into the engine through that injection port. So yeah, about halfway or three quarters. Yeah, a lot of it's burping down going in there. Give it some time to settle. And then you can take your oil filter and you might wanna make sure you get a positive connection. Go slow here, don't, don't jam it in there. You're gonna get some oil gushing out, make a mess. This also gives it time to soak into the fibers. I'm just going real slow, just to let it soak. Now I can feel that connection on the injection port. I'm just gonna slowly pop that in there. And we are on, we've got a positive connection. I can see my oil levels about three quarters of the way up. I've already lubricated my O-ring, so we're good on this sealing surface. Let's go ahead and put that cap on. Drop that cap on there. You can press it down, get that O-ring seated. Get your screws, holes lined up. Drop those in. Get them run in by hand. The torque specifications for these screws are 10 Newton meters or 7.4 foot pounds. So even before I get that click, I, I get these bolts just a little bit of a twist on them. Just like you would do with any cross pattern. Still uh, going even more, so let's run it up a little bit more. All right, there's our click. Now it's time to stand the bike up and add some oil to the engine. The capacity of the engine is about 1.2 liters or 1.3 quarts. I personally like to use the sight glass to get the proper amount. And you see there's a red circle on this sight glass. You need to fill it at least to the bottom at the minimum. And ideally you will have it filled to the center of that circle. 
There's also this kind of star pattern back there on the metal. You want to go to that middle line. So let's go ahead and start putting some oil in here. What we're going to do is bring it up to the middle. Then I will start the bike, cycle the engine, let it sit for several minutes and check the level again. Before you add any oil to the bike, make sure you have it level in and of itself. I like to be on a solid level surface to begin with and then I will use either a hydraulic jack stand like the one I have here or a bike stand of some sort. Remove your oil fill cap, clean it if you have not up to this point and it's time to start adding oil. I've got these disposable funnels that come with the oil change kit I like to use. Now you probably can't see it on the camera, but I can see the sight glass from where I am. And I'm going to slowly fill. What could happen, this is the first quart going in, but if let's say you're um, going for that fractional portion of the next quart, you could overfill it. So it's important that you go slow because that way you can see it coming up the sight glass and you can back off. It takes a second for the oil to go down the clutch plates and get into the basin down there into the sump. So if you overfill, you could quickly overfill and then you have to remove it, which means you got to drop one of your plugs on the bottom, it turns into a big old snafu. So just go slow. Now that I have the level just above the middle mark, that's fine because I still need to start it and it's going to prime up the oil filter. Some of that will get used up. What I'm going to do, install my fill plug just a little hand snug. I am going to start the bike and briefly cycle it through its gears on the stand. Now, I must caution you, if you choose to do this, it can be quite dangerous actually. So if you're not competent and you're not comfortable doing it, most people should just simply get on the bike, ride it up and down the street, run it through the six gears briefly, bring it back and fine tune your oil level. I'm gonna do it on the stand just for the sake of simplicity for this video. This is quite dangerous, so I do not recommend everyone does this unless you can take responsibility if uh, the spike comes off the stand and crashes through the wall. So now I'm going to let the bike sit for several minutes, let all the oil get back into the sump, let it kind of come down the uh, sight glass there, then we'll double check it, fine tune it, get it to the center point. Now that I have the oil level up to the halfway mark in the sight glass, there's only one thing left to do. It's wheelie time. <laughs> 